welcome you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by Galadon Gaming. I'm loving Clash Royale right now, and I'm loving my new Galatroll deck. Princess Parade, Cannon Cavalcade, Pyramid of Pain, I couldn't decide. We went with Pyramid of Pain, but it could have been any of those three titles. We'll look at some replays today of the Galatroll deck. This game is just so much fun with this deck. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I get crushed. I do lose a lot, probably about half the time, but the wins, the wins are fun. So we're gonna get back into the deck and each of these battles I tried at the end for a mass of a certain unit. Now obviously you see guys out there that put together world record this, so many of that, 84 million of uh, whatever it is. That's not exactly what happened here. Obviously not a coordinated battle, I'm not doing a friendly challenge with somebody else. I'm doing my best in a regular battle to put together as many of one type of unit as possible. In this one, it's going to be the Princess Parade. So again, these battles are occurring in challenge mode. So it's level 9 versus level 9, and I've been playing a lot of challenges and only investing 10 gems per challenge uh, gives me an opportunity to try a lot of different techniques without wasting too much. Uh, obviously, you could do it in a regular tournament, and I do do that as well. And uh, again, that happens in the live streams. If you haven't been in a tournament yet, you have no excuse. I run 1,000 player tournaments every single day on mobcrush.com, and it's free. Get in there and maybe check out the Galadon Guarantee Tournaments. Those are the ones where I start a thousand player tournament and close registration after just 200 people join because, you know, Clash Royale team did change it so that it's no longer 50% of the player pool that wins. It's only 20%, so it's made it a lot harder to get cards out of tournaments. So I am battling that problem by giving you guys more tournaments and I am battling the Teddy Beard. What? What is a teddy beard, anyway? That sounds like something that belongs in an urban dictionary. All right, so let's move on to this battle. Final minute, lots of elixir going from both players, so it's usually my advantage with this deck towards the end. The confusion factor, I'm planning on having princesses all over the screen. He won't know where to drop, where to deploy, where to counter. Princesses and uh, fire spirits, obvious. oh. Okay, the Hog Rider's going after the tower. That's not good. And my towers are pretty healthy. Obviously, this game has been played almost to a stalemate so far. Final 30 seconds. Barbs down the right. Barbs up the left. Princesses. I got two so far. Two princesses countering those barbs. Here comes the Goblin Barrel. He does not have a good counter for the Goblin Barrel. They're going to town on that tower. The Barbarians finally get in there. Fire Spirits. Now I've got two princesses moving towards the river. Three. Four princesses going at once. They are annihilating everything in their path. Another goblin barrel lands. You've got to counter the princesses and the goblin barrels. Here they come, moving towards the water. Five, six princesses are going. It's an all time, I don't know, but it's fun, it's cool. It's a blast, and there they go. The right tower, the left tower. They are all over the place. There's so many ladies with flaming bows. And finally, the right tower goes down, and Princess Parade grabs the one crown win. Now, I am the first to admit that from time to time during these battles, I will end up losing simply because I got over, like, overcome with the idea of how many more units of this can I get up? How many more times can I drop princesses or fire spirits or cannons? And I just go crazy, and then the guy ends up turning on me and uh, beating me. So, but that's okay, because we're having fun, and, uh, you know, it's in tournaments where I don't expect to win cards, or it's in the challenges where I don't really need the cards either. Now, this one was interesting because <laughs> Both of us started out with mirrored elixir collectors right off the start in this battle. So you know this is going to be an interesting one. Now I try to sneak in the princess there, doesn't work out. Try to sneak in the goblin barrel, that doesn't work either. This guy's ready for me, man. He's got all the counters to my little sneaky moves so far. And the fact that he's got the mirrored elixir collector up does have me worried that I won't be able to get that usual advantage of tons of elixir late in the battle unless I can, oh my gosh, this guy is matching me pump for pump. Each of us with three up at the same time right now, this is gonna be a crazy elixir dump about the last minute of this battle. Imagine double elixir with all of these pumps going. We are gonna be throwing cards everywhere and I can just only hope for a little confusion. Now he did place that pump pretty far forward. We were able to take it out pretty quickly. That helps out a little bit. His others are still going. Princess in the back trying to protect her. No, she survives the arrows. The level eight player facing my level two princess because she's mirrored and she survives arrows right there. 
that is going to be a critical change in this battle. It's those little things. It's when your goblins can't get one-shotted, when your princess can't get one-shotted, that you know the other player is going to be in a lot of trouble late in the game, especially with a mirror card and the ability to get multiple princesses, multiple goblins, goblin barrels up at the same time. So the knight, again, one of my favorite cards, does such a good job at countering the Valkyrie, countering a Musketeer, countering even the Mini Pekka. And there it is again, the Princess surviving. He uses mirrored arrows. He ends up having to use seven Elixir to take down my Princess. And in the meantime, the Goblin Barrel Goblins, they get the job done. That is the thing about this deck. The Princess, the Fire Spirits, and the Goblin Barrel are all types of cards that you're often going to see countered by arrows or a zap spell. So it's a matter of baiting those cards out of a player's deck, baiting those counters away, and then mirroring the card or dropping the other card that does a similar function. And now it's time for the Cannon Cavalcade, the cavalry of canyons covering the cacophony of considerable... Uh... Well, there's a lot of cannons. All right, so at this point, I'm going for as many cannons as I can. I realize that that might be fun. So we've got three up at the same time. We got the mirror. Get ready. Try to get four. There it is. Just for a split second, we had four cannons, and uh, nobody's getting through this mess. It is a fortress over here, and uh, that is the one zero win. All right, so again, this troll deck ends up with these weird outcomes like that. This is the next one. You guys are waiting for it. This is the Pyramid of Pain. Alright, so back in a challenge mode, and it looks like this guy might recognize me. Now, he's got a very interesting deck of his own, and look at his starting hand. Rage, Fireball, Arrows, Mirror. He has no troops that he can play. And uh, I honestly, I threw up the good game well played because this was early on, and I knew that my plan was just to get as many pumps up as I could. Uh, I started that purposefully, so I kind of had a feeling that I was going to get annihilated by this guy. Princess goes down right away. And uh, interesting, funny how he had to wait because he's got such a strange deck himself. Now, obviously, his deck uh, is really bizarre. I mean, he's got, he's got almost all spells, so I was not expecting that. And then when he mirrored the arrows like that, that was another surprise. I suddenly realized it was troll versus troll, both players with very unusual decks. And they can either be seen as purely trolling or as some sort of unusual strategy. Now right there, his free spell did not work out. Luckily, I had the princess out of range. She was able to protect from a distance, and uh, you gotta love that about the princess. Now, this didn't work out so well. The princess gets annihilated, but those fire spirits are going to be there to save the day. The knight moving forward, and now I'm gonna protect him with mirrored fire spirits. Can we get to the tower? Not quite, but we did take down a five elixir pack of barbarians right there. Worked out okay, countered what could have been a mess coming from my tower. Once again, we've got under 90 seconds left. We've got another princess up. Love to keep the princesses up as often as possible. That one is going after the elixir collector. So now the knight is in front of the princess. The princess and the fire spirits quickly getting through all of those minions. And there we are on the tower with the goblin barrel once again. And 1-0. Early lead, one minute left. Looking good. Princess falls to arrows, but now we're thinking elixir pumps. I am thinking as many pumps as I can possibly get up. We've got a big lead. We kind of know what's in his hand. There's nothing that we really need to fear. Uh, obviously, golems, lava hounds, giant balloon, uh, royal giant, those are the cards that are death to this deck. This deck that he has, really nothing for me to worry about with so much splash damage. Even with the freeze spell right here, I squeeze in the barbs. He's got the rage spell, but they're not going to get a chance to wipe out the tower. Barely any damage done whatsoever. Elixir collector number four, elixir collector number five. You can start to see the shape begin to take place here. 20 seconds remaining. Now I'm just trying to cycle through the cheap cards and get back to the elixir pumps. The knight goes down. Here comes elixir collector number five. Okay, so the pyramid really looking good now. There's number six. Got to try to cycle around 10 seconds remaining. Get the princess, get the fire spirits down. Can we get seven? Can we get eight elixir collectors down on the screen? There's a cannon at the front and it's seven. The perfect pyramid of pain with the point being the cannon. So I don't know you guys, I'm still loving this deck. Let me know what you think. Is it obnoxious? Is it fun? Have you tried it? Do you hate it? Either way, thank you guys so much for still being here. Hashtag Galafam. I appreciate your time. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow for more full attacks.
It should be Peter's Pyramid of Pain. That would be perfect. 